in the future there will be more extreme weather if we don't address climate change, more floods, more droughts, uh, sea levels are rising which will have a big impact on low-lying areas. And I think these are effects that everyday people will see. Um, so temperature increases for example or droughts have an impact on agriculture. Um, extreme weather has an impact on people's livelihoods. Uh, so this is a real challenge uh, that people do need to uh, accept. Um, I'm delighted to be in Thailand. Uh, I've been coming here for many years and seen Thailand develop quickly. And I think there are lots of areas where we can work closely together to bring our people closer together. The UK is looking forward to welcoming leaders from around the world to attend the summit. In the Paris Agreement in 2015, uh leaders agreed that every five years countries would announce new short-term commitments on emissions reductions called national determined contributions and also announce updates on their long-term strategy and this is the COP meeting that is five years after that so this is the point at which leaders are going to go and make new short and long-term commitments. As you say, this is very urgent because a few months ago, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a UN body responsible for climate science, found that climate change is occurring. It is caused by human activity and already global temperatures have increased by 1.1 degrees centigrade. And if we carry on as we are, then we will exceed 1.5 degrees uh, within 20 years. We as a world need to achieve net zero uh, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions uh, by the middle of the century. So the UK is encouraging all countries to uh, commit to net zero by 2050, but also to uh, stop using coal as uh, an energy source. I would say that this is a very complicated question for different countries and it depends on how your economy is constituted. Uh, so for instance, if you have carbon intensive or energy intensive industry, then that will obviously have a greater effect if you want to reduce emissions than in other sectors. So I think each country needs to come to its own judgment about uh, what it commits to and how it gets there. We, we need to have action, it's not just talk at this stage because climate change is happening and I think the, um, uh, that we're already seeing uh, very significant effects of climate change around the world. Uh, in a recent survey, 80% of British people said they were concerned about climate change or very concerned and 90% said they had already witnessed some effect from climate change. Uh, so this is happening but there are concrete actions that we can take. So for example, the UK has announced an end to new petrol and diesel, diesel powered cars by 2013. Uh, we've announced an end to gas boilers. We have legislated for net zero by 2050. So these these are uh, clear actions and they will help deliver the goal. This is a global problem, we can't do it, no, no one country can solve this problem, we all have to act together. But I would say that if a country announces a policy direction, such as for us with the uh, no petrol and diesel cars, then our hope is that the investment will follow from private companies uh, so that low carbon technology will get cheaper. It's, it's good news that we're moving forward and I'm very much, uh, I would very much welcome the fact that the UK is one of the countries uh, from where travel will be possible without quarantine uh, from November. I would say that tourists will come back, Tour uh, tourism in Thailand is very popular among British people uh, who love uh, Thailand's uh, natural scenery, beaches, ancient cities, uh, as well as the culture, the food and uh, uh, Thai people. So I'm sure that tourism will come back uh, relatively quickly. But of course the opening up of our economies is about much more than tourism. Uh, other sectors as well will benefit hugely in terms of uh, business travel being possible, in terms of people being able to travel overseas to study and have a face-to-face -face experience as, as used to be possible. So I think this is good news for a whole number of reasons. That's right, so AstraZeneca produced anywhere in the world is now recognised for entry into the UK. The, the, the issue linked to this, of course, is vaccine certification. And so the UK is now recognising uh, vaccine certification from Thailand for vaccines that are approved in the UK, of which AstraZeneca is one.
each day, yes. Although the number of people getting seriously ill or going to hospital is...